Hi there, everybody. All right, so our CIA class this week was all about Scripture. Um, so we began discussing why, why do we have Scripture? Why did God give it to us? Because um, we can know God apart from Scripture. We can know God through reason alone or through experiences we have in the world. Um, but that knowledge we can, the reason we have it is because that knowledge we can attain from God, it's not enough. We need a little bit more. We need a little bit more. We need a little bit more extra. We need a little more oomph in our fight. Um, so that's where Scripture comes in. And well, what is it? Well, St. Peter tells us that Scripture comes from God. In 2 Peter 1, verses 20 through 21, he states, First of all, you must understand this, that no prophecy of Scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation, but because no prophecy ever came by man, by the impulse of man, but men moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. Um, so here you can see that Scripture comes from God via the Holy Spirit, um, recorded by men. Um, so then we took this... In this, in this verse where he says no prophecy of Scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation, we kind of looked at that a little bit deeper and went further on into 2 Peter in chapter 3, where he states, There are some things in them that are hard to understand, which the ignorant and unstable twist for their own destruction, as they do the other Scriptures. So here we see that St. Peter is basically forewarning us or alluding, telling us that, you know, one's own personal interpretation of Scripture is very dangerous and it can basically, ultimately, divide, divide a faith, um, which it did with Sola Scriptura. Um, so, in today's world, I believe that if St. Peter had um, knowledge of today's terms, he would say, you know, be wary of the concept of Sola Scriptura, because that's basically what he's alluding to here, is the problem with it. Um, so, what is Sola Scriptura in the first place? Well, Sola Scriptura is the belief that all you need for one's faith can be found in the Scriptures. Um, so on the surface, it sounds great. It sounds perfect. Um, but when you look into it more deeper and you kind of study the idea behind it, um, it's very problematic, very counterintuitive, and ultimately very hypocritical of itself. Um, because Sola Scriptura fails its own test by not being found anywhere in the Scriptures. You could look from Genesis all the way to Revelation, and you're not going to see anywhere in any of the authors. And there's lots of different authors, lots of different time periods, where it does not say all you need for your faith is found in the Bible or found in the scriptures, or found in these words, or these writings. Um, so that's a very big problem. Um, and we also went on to discuss how there are other problems that you can, other many other problems with Sola Scriptura, and one of them that, we, that I thought was the most interesting was the idea that you can make a case from Scripture that Jesus isn't God. And this comes from, in the Gospels, when Jesus alludes to the Father being greater than He, and then this makes, causes big confusion where, we know we have this profound belief of the Trinity and Father, Son, Holy Spirit, whereas the Father and Son are one. Well, here Jesus says, you know, the Father is greater than I. So if you took that point of view and just went boom and ran with it, you would make you could basically destroy Christianity in that regard. Um, from this idea that all relates back to Sola Scripture and one's personal interpretation of it. Um, so from then on, we went and discussed this idea of canonical sufficiency, um, and this is a term that is, I guess, coined by our instructor. Um, he said it's not, an, uh, not a term that is usually or readily available or defined or used by apologetics or um, historians and whatnot. Um, but this, basically the definition of canonical sufficiency is that it is a list of books that is sufficiently explained by the work or immediate author itself. Um, it's sufficient to explain its own canon, its own list of books. Um, so, so basically what this alludes to is that the Bible is not canonically sufficient. Um, and that alludes to needing another uh, external authority to vali validate the books in the Bible, and this is where the whole, the, all the church and where the church and tradition comes into play. Um, so, the basically the, canon the canonicity, canonicity of a text is not determined by subjective feeling or, as we would say, one's personal own interpretation, but safeguarded by the objectively knowable tradition of the church. Um, so, this. Basically, yeah, so canonically sufficient basically tells us that since there, since what we have in the Bible is not explicitly defined as being in the Bible, that we need an, ex we need an external authority or church, external authority or the church to tell us what is in the Bible and what is um, scripture and what is not or what is infallible and what is not. Um, so then our instructors gave us this last, what we finished class with was this last Thing to think about about how we have the Bible and we have the scripture from God and then we have the church and the teaching authority of scripture 
and then we went, we were supposed to compare or relate that to the concept of the Constitution, which governs the people of the United States of America, and then the Supreme Court upholds that ruling or validates those rulings of the Constitution. Um, so we wanted to draw a comparison or correlate the two, and how you know we can have these ways to live by, or this we can have the rules to live by, and the laws to live by, and we can have this moral rule and law to live by. But we need something more in depth behind that, whereas we have the church and we have the Supreme Court to uphold that. Um, so just something to think about um, kind of provides some valid or some arguments against sola scriptura and how there's more to it than just that. Um, so hope this video is informational. Um, read a chat with any questions or comments or whatnot. Um, love one, love life, love all.